Now I will do some activities first maybe. Who knows the You'll Never Walk Alone song? Okay, only me, thank you. <laughs> okay, before I invite Jason Meckett here, I would like to you to see the video profile why he became one of the legends of Liverpool FC. Enjoy the video. So he's been come through when he signed for the Reds. He had created his reputation at Bolton as a central midfielder, also starring for Republic of Ireland in the 1994 World Cup. McAteer come as breath of fresh air. Please welcome Jason McAteer! <laughs> nice to meet you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous because several years ago I only saw you on TV and I'm a Liverpool fan as well. It's okay, I don't bite. So yeah. Okay. Ask me what you want. You want <laughs> okay, we'll start uh, question and answer uh -huh. before we also have a quiz All to the ladies and gentlemen to get one of the uh, most uh, thing that you know really. I like a quiz. Yes. Really like quiz. Okay. So the first question is: Is it your first visit to Indonesia, or maybe already visited Indonesia, Bali, or some place? Uh, I've been on holiday. The traffic's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a standard uh, answer, so you have to give more. If, uh, if you own the motorbike shop, you will be very rich. <laughs> I, I get that. Um, the food's great. People are fantastic. Really warm and welcoming. Um, the golf courses are nice. Okay. So yeah, all in all, it's been good. It's been good up to now. Yeah. Beautiful view here. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So if you already experienced the traffic, then I, then we can say welcome to Jakarta. Yeah, crazy <laughs> I'm really sorry for that. It's okay. Yeah. And now, uh, when you look back at your Liverpool career, what are your most memorable moments when you play Liverpool? I think for me, um, I grew up um, about ten miles from from Anfield, okay. so that would probably take three hours in this country. Together. <laughs> Ten miles. Yeah. Um, so I, I grew up a Liverpool through the eighties and the nineties. Um, so I always wanted to play for Liverpool. I always wanted to get to put on the red shirt and um, and represent Liverpool as a footballer. But you know, it's a, it's a dream when you're such a young boy and you never think you're gonna you're gonna reach that dream. So I think when the opportunity came when I was about twenty four years old, I was at Bolton. Liverpool yes. paid four and a half million pound for me to, to sign for them. It was a dream come true, and it was one I, I realised, and it was one I thoroughly enjoyed. So that probably the highlight would be signing for the football club and the sense of achievement to do that, and then uh, the rest. Obviously, playing in the cup final yes. for Liverpool. Obviously, we, we lost to Manchester United, which was a pretty bad day, but the cup final was great. Um, we obviously just missed out narrowly on winning the Premier League. Finished third a couple of times, fourth. We played in Europe, knocked out the semi-final of the UEFA Cup, which was not a bad achievement, but disappointing as well, because we thought we could have won it. Uh, what career would you have opted for? Is this the quiz? <laughs> no! Yeah, all right. It's a question. What would I be if I wasn't a footballer? Um, wow. School teacher, I think. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? I don't know. Um, I, was, I signed professional forms yes. when I was 20, which was, it's quite old. I mean, my friends were all professional footballers from 15, 16, 17, 18. Mm -hmm. I never got picked up by a football club, so I didn't play until I was 20. I uh, and I, I went to college and applied at the university to be a school teacher. So, uh, so yeah, that was it. <laughs> what subject that you will teach if you become a professional uh, sports, teacher? Sports, sports, sports obviously, sports. And, uh, and art. Sports I studied art. graphic design. Okay. I was rubbish, but I studied it. <laughs> it's a good profession. In I was a much better footballer than a graphic designer. <laughs> I think. Oh. Yes, I just went to Anfield. It's a, it's uh, a oh, Anfield. I also call the theater and fun. 
Oke, okay, John Pounce berikan kepada Steve Opel, memberikan kepada Rocky Fowler tadi bola diutara, angkat ke sebelah kanan, ada Jason tertentu, tendangan langsung, dan Jack Grant! Thank you! He asked me if I'm alright. No, I'm not alright. I'm really nervous. Thank you for being here, legends from Liverpool FC. Thank you for being in Jakarta. But before we get to know our legends, we'd like to do a quick toast. Uh, can we please invite back up? Mr. Rino Dono Saputro as a Chief Executive Officer at Standard Chartered Bank Indonesia and His Excellency Mr. Moaza Malik, British Ambassador to Indonesia, Asia and Timor-Leste for doing toast for us tonight, please. So, everybody, I just want to Propose a toast. I live just outside Liverpool, 20 miles. Uh, Kenny Dalglish was my hero growing up as a small boy. So I always dreamed of playing for Liverpool, but never really expected to put on the red jersey. And I was playing for Bolt Wanderers, um, and then Roy, <laughs> as a matter of fact, rang up Bolton, offered them four and a half million pounds, yes. asked to speak to me. I made my mind up within five seconds to speak to Roy. <laughs> I was going to play for Liverpool. We all made mistakes. <laughs> and, the <laughs> and the dream had come true. So um, I'll never forget the first day I went into the dressing room for my first game and seen my, my kit up on the, the dressing room wall on the hanger, McAteer written on the back. I realised that I'd reached the, reached the dream. It had come true. And uh, I had to pinch myself every day for four and a half years. So it was there. Uh, Thanks to Roy Evans for that, for that opportunity. Maybe I can I, 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 I managed to get to Liverpool when I was 35, so I had spent most of my footballing career playing against Liverpool. So to get that phone call at 35, I've got to admit, when I received the phone call from Gerard Tully, I thought it was a, a prank. I thought it was one of my friends taking the mickey, but it turned out to be true. Negotiations were very simple, I would quite simply have signed for nothing. It wasn't about money, you know, getting to Liverpool at 35. As a young guy, a young professional footballer, I grew up in the, in the mid 80s when Liverpool were playing a different football to all other clubs across the world. They were dominating Europe. So I associated winning with Liverpool. So getting the chance to go to Liverpool, it was something I just jumped at. And the two years I had there were, as the same as Jason, I've sometimes got to pinch myself. Three trophies. Five trophies in all, got a visit to Buckingham Palace to meet the Queen. It was pretty special, and that's why I've got this connection with the club. Otherwise, I was only there a couple of times. We won 40 major trophies. Yeah. I've got to admit, but it, not because of me, by the way. Um, I was really part of the team. Um, I wasn't the best player, I wasn't the best coach, I wasn't the best manager. Um, people like Shankly before me. Um, Paisley, Joe Fagan, well, wonderful people. And I learned so much from them being a part of the blue room, which is obviously the famous place where all our tactics were talked about with ourselves. Um, Bill Shankly started Liverpool for me. Without Bill Shankly, we would not be where we are today. Lots of other people have followed and done very good jobs. But just so when you sign, I was, a, I was always a Liverpool supporter. So just to be able to sign for I played for um, Lancashire schoolboys, England schoolboys, and I could have signed for anybody in the country. But my heart. So welcome, Patrick Berger, Gary McAllister, Jason McAteer, and Mr. Roy Offense tonight in Jakarta. And we are really pleased to have you all. It's truly an honor to share the stage with all of you, especially I also a Liverpool fans. So I'm a little bit nervous to see you and interview you all. We have some eager fans today who would like to know more about you. And you already arrived in my hands. Um, this is uh, like, I give you the question and all of you can share about the question. Uh, you've seen the love and support of the fans all around the world. Liverpool has some of the most passionate fans across the globe. 
So how has your experience when you look back at your LFC career? What or what are your most memorable moments when you play or coach in uh, Liverpool FC? Maybe from Mr. Ray Fence first. Um, well, that's a very difficult question for me because I haven't been in Liverpool for 35 years. Part of Liverpool's history tradition. Kebanyakan main di luar dan lawan Liverpool. Tapi begitu di telepon zaman Gerard Hulie itu disangkanya bohongan dan ternyata dua tahun di situ dapat banyak gelar, bisa ke Buckingham Palace dan itu pengalaman yang luar biasa dari Gary McAllister. Patrick. Uh, well, I was uh, I was signed by Roy 1996 as well, uh, believe it or not, and uh, after after Euro '96, and I managed to stay at Liverpool for seven years. And uh, for me, I think you know that the, one of the highlights was the season 2001 when we won three trophies, which uh, was an unbelievable achievement. You know, we had a great team, great camaraderie. You know, it was it was really enjoyable to spend the time and play with the guys uh, in, in that season. But you know, probably the the, the, the highlight, the, the highlight number one for me was when I signed for Liverpool. Uh, and that day, my dream came true. And uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that I that I have been part of the club for uh, seven years. Can I, just, can, I, can I just say one thing about Alfie? Yes. All these, I think that is the most, the, the biggest compliment that they could place into our football club. That their time there was was fantastic. Uh, obviously, they've been to other places, but it's great that now we. Patrick comes back for a lot of the games. Vladdy Spicer, again with Everybody who ever played Liverpool comes back, and that is a fantastic thing. Semua pemain yang udah pernah main Liverpool diminta balik, diminta acara kayak begini pasti semuanya kembali lagi. Karena kenapa Liverpool itu setia banget orang itu tangan dulu. Lah. Okay, and the next question is, what was your craziest fan story that happened to you personally? My craziest story uh, with fans. What's a crazy story? Um, well, we all make mistakes in football. Yes. I would say I made a few, of course. Yeah. Um, um, I signed a player called Sean Dundee. Sean Dundee. Um, Carl Hans Riedler was a, obviously a top player, best he's ever played in his life. And I signed him, and of course, he was useless. He was no, he, he was. Not only used as he was a waste of space, he didn't do anything for us. Um, but to be fair, I learned so much of that. The end of it all is that you must always go and look at a player before you sign him. And if you sign a player and he's not good enough, you have to get rid of him. He has to go. Um, so it was a big learning curve for me, crazy as it seems, but again, you never let the players, never let the players influence your selection because it might be his friend or his best mate. He end up with a bad player, so that would be my worst sort of scenario. Okay, waktu tanda tangan kontrak salah satu pemain lah ya, mesti dibilangin gak enak ya. Jadi jangan dipengaruhi oleh pemain lain. Your crazy story with the fans? It's probably not crazy actually. Um... Uh, except traffic in Jakarta. Yeah. That's the most crazy. I know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> traffic in Jakarta. <laughs> oh. I think it's not a crazy story. I think my my relationship with the fans. I think Liverpool fans. Because of the history and the legacy of the football club, the trophies they've won, they're very knowledgeable fans. Even today, they know what they're talking about. Um, they're a brilliant set of fans to play in front of. And I played in a team with Matt Manaman, Patrick, Robbie Fowler. Uh, they were the heroes of the team, and the cop used to sing their name every week. And, and, and I played on the right hand side. I wasn't a player who scored a lot of goals. I assisted in, in many goals, but I wasn't really one of the fans' favourites. So to hear them sing Fowler's name and Manaman's name, I used to think to myself, I'd love the fans to sing my name once. <laughs> and then one day, the ball went out of play and I started listening and I could, do you remember the Macarena, the song? Yeah. The next thing they started singing, he runs down the wing and his name is Macatiga, he runs down the wing. <laughs> And I remember the fans singing this song and I remember the biggest smile and sense of relief that the fans actually realized. <laughs> <laughs> so I was made up when they sang that song. <laughs> yeah, I think I think for me, I think over the years, I think the, one of the re main reasons why I feel Scotsmen do tend to do well at Liverpool, but over the history of the club has been very successful Scots players and managers at the club. And I, I tend to think it's because both sets of people, Scotland and, and Liverpool, have got similar sense of humour. 
So I can remember one night playing in Bradford, <coughs> scored a free kick, and then about 10 minutes later, I hit the crossbar, and the fans behind the goal was started singing, what a waste of money. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. You know, so that's the, that was the little, one of the little things I felt with the, during my period there. As much as it's a serious game and we're professional, you want to win, there's a, there's a bit of fun, sense of humour between fans and players. Oh, well, uh, like, you know, there has been few few things that uh, you know over the years were quite funny, but I don't think that uh, you know I can really explain them, you know, over here. Uh, but uh, you know, I didn't really have any anything anything really crazy, you know. So yeah, there's too many youngsters in the room to be telling. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe after, after ten o'clock. After ten. After ten o'clock. All the all the girls. Fans, they loved. I say that all the boy fans love Patrick as well. <laughs> He's so handsome, right? He's too handsome. He used to go in the shower and we'd all follow him in. <laughs> you know, Jason. <laughs> Wash him. <laughs> Even United fans in Indonesia love Patrick. Hey, yeah, love him. Everyone loves Patrick. Oh. Okay, itu pengalaman pengalaman yang luar biasa tentang. Fans yang didapat oleh keempat pemain ini dan untuk Patrick itu pengecualian karena dia terlalu ganteng jadi katanya sampai diikutin mandi segala macam karena dia terlalu ganteng. So please give a round of applause once again for you in an orderly fashion on the right of the stage. Jadi dari sini, nah jadi dari depan paling depan paling pertama yang dari sini. You hate quiz, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know the answer, right? Okay, so he can Chelsea! And teman fotografer boleh dibantu ambil gambarnya. Thank you. Okay, the second and the last one. What number of Patrick Burger jersey is shirt on Liverpool FC? Which one? The kids. Here. Here. You will know. You will know. You will know. Because Jason knows. Come here. I'll tell you what it is. Jason. Jason. Jason will give you the answer. <laughs> okay, this is Anna's answer. What number? Fifteen. Fifteen? Patrick, is it right? Yeah. 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 Patrick, can you give him a jersey? <laughs> and I believe that his father will take the jersey of him. <laughs> Hey, Jason love freestyle Stop. photo, freestyle yeah, photo. Yeah, yeah, Hitung 321, dia mau freestyle. Freestyle, freestyle. Freestyle, right? freestyle okay, photo. 1, 2, 3. Freestyle. freestyle. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Freestyle. Okay, freestyle. 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 Freesty